Hey Nifty Knights, today we're going to be learning about the basics of Warbla. Warbla is a thermoplastic. When cool, it has a rigid, hard form, but when you heat it up, it becomes malleable and you can shape it to your desire. Now some of the tools I like to have on hand when working with Warbla are a pair of basic scissors. Warbla is able to cut with just normal scissors. I like to have a heat gun. These can be found at any home improvement store such as Home Depot or Lowe's. This is just the most efficient way to heat up the warbler. There are other methods such as steam, but this is my favorite. When doing recessed detailed work, I also like to have a ballpoint pen as well as a flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you a little bit of how I use these guys in a second. So warbler comes in many sizes. I prefer to order the jumbo sheet because I know I'm going to use it up and it's just the most economical amount. Um, this is the bit I have left over from my last project in my jumbo sheet I had ordered. As you can see you get a lot of warbler. Of course it will depend upon the size of your project how much you're actually going to need and if you use a double layer or a single layer method. There are two sides to the warbler. You have the non-shiny side and you have the shiny side. Now the shiny side is an adhesive and when you heat it up the warbler will actually stick to itself and kind of mold together. So it's a great way to glue pieces together to form one single piece. Another great thing about warbler is that all of the scraps can be reused. So I tend to save all my small scraps in a bag so when I need to do fine detailing work I can just use these guys instead of cutting into my large sheets. So now I'm going to show you an example of actually working with the warbler and heating it up. I prefer to use a slightly lower heat setting when warming it up. That's because the warbler will take its time heating up and becoming soft and malleable and it won't become too hot to the touch immediately. I found that if I use a higher heat setting, the warbler does get softer faster, but it also tends to get super hot to the touch and makes it a lot harder to work with. You'll notice that the warbler as you heat it will begin to darken, and that will be your indication point that it's ready to work with. So you notice that I moved it back and forth as I slowly heated it up and kind of tested it for flexibility. When it's warm you'll have about 30 seconds to a minute to work with it, but you can always reheat it in order to reshape it or reform it. So let's say I have this glass here that I want to form the warbler to. So I just kind of press and mold it. And I can tell my war is already getting a little bit cool so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little more heat so it's more flexible again. So when you're doing a complex curve like this, you kind of just gently stretch and pull it until the desired shape. With more complex curves, you may want to double the layers of your warbler because it can get kind of thin when you start to stretch it out. Then you let it cool down before removing it and it'll retain its shape. So this is still a little warm yet, so we're going to let it sit. There are some surfaces that warbler likes to stick to styrofoam being one of those. So you want to put a protective layer between your warbler and the object. I'll often use something such as plastic wrap so that way it'll pop off once it's done cooling. So as you can see it's still a little bit darker in color yet than the unheated warbler. We'll give this just a little bit longer to cool. I can already tell it's starting to get rigid here. Once it's cool enough, you can just pop it off and see, it's retained its shape. So this could be a cool detail work on maybe a piece of armor or a weapon that you might be constructing. So a single layer of warbler is fine for smaller pieces or objects that are just detailed work like this might be, but it is still flexible and oftentimes cosplayers need larger pieces to be stronger, so they'll use what's known as the sandwich method. 
They'll take craft foam, such as this, which can be found at any craft store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever's in your town, and they'll sandwich this with Warblow. What I prefer to do is to cut out my pattern on the foam, and then cut out a slightly larger pattern on my Warblow, and wrap it around the edges of the foam. If you need a piece that's even stronger than that, you can take Warblow and actually sandwich the foam, and that will give you a super strong piece but I also tend to find that of course it uses more warbler so it's a more expensive method. So pros and cons of course to any technique it's whatever works for you and the piece that you're making. So let's go ahead and show how to make a piece using warbler and craft foam. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to need a pattern. Now there are a number of ways to use patterns. The quick and dirty way is to use something like cling wrap and actually just wrap your body part with the cling wrap, masking tape, then dry out your pattern and cut it off, cut it out flat, trace it onto your foam and warbler, and you're ready to go. Another way is to make an actual form of your body using duct tape or plaster. That creates a dress foam that you can then work off of separately. That's an easier method in the long run if you don't always have a friend on hand to help you out with the cling wrap method. But I'll go ahead and show you a quick dirty method right now with the cling wrap. So let's say we just want to make a bracelet. We'll just go ahead and wrap our arm in the cling wrap. And then we've got our masking tape, so we'll just go ahead and wrap that. Now this is the part where it's much easier to have a friend on hand. As you can see, the cling wrap is just kind of pulling off my arm here. Now because you want to make a pattern out of this, you don't want to pull the tape too tight because then your piece will be too small. And if you're doing more detailed work areas, say you're going to be working on a breastplate, use smaller pieces of tape so you can actually get the contoured forms properly. So if we're making a bracer, we'd probably do my whole arm, but we're just going to make a simple bracelet for illustration right now. So I've wrapped this part. And I'm going to take a marker and draw out the pattern that I want. This doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a guideline for when you cut it off and need to trace it out. Then once you have your pattern, carefully cut it off. So then when we unfold it, we have a flat pattern. That so now that we have our pattern, we've cut it off and unfolded it, we can go ahead and cut it out so we can transfer it to our foam and warbler. Now again, I like to use a marker or a ball tip point pen. This pen has a rolling ball on it, so it's not going to tear the foam as I trace. And then I'll typically use my foam to actually go ahead and trace on the warbler. Now remember, there's two sides to the warbler. So the side that you're going to want to put face down on the foam is the shiny, smooth side, which is the glue adhesive. So keep that in mind when you're tracing especially on pieces that aren't necessarily reversible. So I just went ahead and traced the actual shape, but when I cut it out I'm going to leave a border because I'm going to be wrapping the edges of the warbler around the foam to secure it in place. Now let's say I also want a decorative design on my bracelet here. I can take my ballpoint pen and go ahead and carve that design into my bracelet area. So I just kind of roll it back and forth, not necessarily going all the way through my foam, but making sure that there's an indentation that I can then trace over once I've glued my warbler down.
So once we have that ready, we can go ahead and heat up our warbler and put it to our piece. So now we take our foam and with the glue side down, we put our warbler over the top and we begin to wrap our edges. Now sometimes on corners you might have to snip the warbler to get it lie a little bit flat, but I think this is hot enough where we can just mold it here. Now if this were an actual piece, of course my warbler would be the full size and I'd make it wrap around the edges of the bracelet all the way. So we just flatten it out and then we give it a chance to cool down so that it'll stick. Now before we actually bend it to the shape we want, it can sometimes be easier to do any detail work such as the design we carved in before we actually make it that 3D formed shape. So we're going to go ahead and give the front side a little bit of blast of heat and then we'll take our flathead screwdriver and kind of indent the warbler into that marker line we made before. So I'm just kind of working the screwdriver into the indentations. Basically tracing the warbler into my foam. So as you can see here, it's now indented. You want to make sure when you're tracing your pattern onto your foam that you actually get the pen marks on there. You can see on some of the lines I traced, I didn't actually have the pen mark inside the indentation. And it's a lot more difficult to see through the warbler, so you definitely want the pen mark so you can tell where you're indenting. So we're going to let this sit just a second. One more tip if you ever heat up your warbler and it starts to bubble, that's typically because you have some trapped air. What you need to do is take a sharp object such as a pin, poke a hole, and then you can smooth the warbler out with your finger as you let the air escape from it. So once we have our details done, we can then go ahead and shape the piece to the body part we want it to fit. If you need to, go ahead and heat up your warbler. Mine's still pretty flexible here. So we're just going to go ahead and form it to the body part area. And then we're going to hold it in place while it cools back down. Once it's cooled off, you can go ahead and remove it. We're still a little bit warm here, so I'm going to give it another second. But that's how you make a piece out of warbler and craft foam. And again, this was doing the wraparound method rather than a full sandwich. And for a piece of this size and what I'm going to be using it for, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's still a little flexible, but it's also rigid. So, I mean, it's not going to be breaking anytime soon at all. So after this step, we're now ready to prime and then we can paint it. So there are a number of methods for priming and painting your pieces once you've completed. Everybody has their favorite method. You know, of course, all the methods have various pros and cons to them. Some popular options include gesso, wood glue, just to name a few. You know, some of them are more expensive. Some of them need fewer coats. Some of them are more flexible than others. When you make a piece out of Warbler, the first important starting place is your pattern. If you don't have a good pattern, you're not going to have a good piece when you're done. Some things to take into consideration in addition to the sizing of the piece on your body are the way your body moves. You know, you have joints and areas that flex and bend. So for example, this is a shoulder pauldron and armor that goes down my arm. And that's obviously not going to be rigid throughout the day. It's going to need to be able to move and flex throughout the day. So I have it jointed into three parts. And I did that by having elastic in here that I've reinforced with Warbla as well as glue onto the craft form here. I have Velcro and this attaches to my breastplate when I go to put it all together and assemble it while wearing it. 
here's my bracer I made. This is actually a slip-on. Um, I'm lucky enough to have small enough forearms that I don't have to actually strap this on. I can basically just slide it on. So, this is this guy. And this was made out of two separate pieces of warbler. I had a smaller section with an extra layer of craft foam on top for the detail. And then this was a second piece with two strips of craft foam before covering it all in warbler. And then essentially gluing the two pieces together by heating them up. Some other pieces from that cosplay. This was a belt I had on. The detail here is also made out of warbler. I took scraps, heated them up, and basically rolled them out like you used to do with Play-Doh and making Play-Doh snakes. This guy attaches with Velcro around my waist. It also has Velcro on the inside for attaching skirt pieces that hang down. And then here's my actual breastplate that I made. This was the first breastplate I ever made, so you can see it's not perfect. But you know, working with Warble is a learning process. You're always getting better at it. Um, I had some issues where I was trying to join this in the center, and I couldn't quite get it smooth. I didn't have enough time to build up my layers of gesso or wood glue and then sand it smooth. That's another tip. Start early. You know, you want to give yourself time in case things happen that are unexpected. The details here, we're just adding extra layers of warbler. And then the back, so here I use D-rings attached with warbler to the inside of my craft foam. And then you can use lace or straps to attach it. This is another method for attaching pieces that are on your arms or legs. So there you have it. That's the basics of working with Warbler. It's a really fun material to work with. You can do a lot of things with it. And you know, it really is quite versatile. You can make detailed shapes, detailed curves. You can make intricate details. And you know, it's still slightly flexible, but it's also quite hard. You know, just practice with it. Play around with it. See what techniques work best for you. Try out different tools that you can work with it. Um, you know, even though Warbler can be reshaped by reheating it up, try not to overwork it. It can get thin, it can tear. So always double up layers, especially if you're going to be stretching it far over something. Um, that's common in making the breastplate area on female armor. It's good to double up those layers so you don't stretch it too thin, don't overwork it. If it starts to bubble, again, it could be trapped air, it could be that you're overheating it, try a lower heat setting, heating it up with the gun farther away, let it cool down, you know, you can always start over again. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful, leave me comments if you have any questions, hopefully the pictures and links below will also give you more details. Thanks for stopping by today, guys.